Welcome to another week of Psych Thoughts. On today's episode, we've got animals and we've got problems, and we've got a lot of them, uh, of both. If you're just joining us for the first time on Psych Thoughts, there's normally just humans, but not anymore. I'm Derek, with always, uh, with my best friend and colleague. Say hi, Doug. Hey, I'm right here. <laughs> and we're joined by we, we uh, our faculty and friends. Uh, we're joined by faculty and friends and our lovely intern who makes poor decisions as always. So we thought it'd be cool to do a show about us and our pets today. So there were a there weren't enough animals on the show, so we decided to get a few more. Uh, and hope everyone's doing well. Theme song. Still don't have a theme song. Those of you have been following along, write one. That'll be that'll be great. Uh, if you're looking for a new intern, you might want to give Elaine a job. Uh, she doesn't like this one anymore. Uh, we are being joined by Dr. Henniger, a staple on Psych Thoughts video. Say hi. Hi. And who's joining you, Dr. Henniger? Well, here, this is Teddy. Teddy. <laughs> this is Frankie. And then Frankie. down here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah. And this is Ellie. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> Your fans want to see you. <laughs> All right, that was it. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> It's a strange day on Psych Thoughts when the, uh, when the cats are more uh, social than the dog, right? Yes. Yeah, she doesn't like the cats, though, so she's afraid of them. They bully her. <laughs> for those of you who have watched Psych Thoughts or listened to Psych Thoughts on the radio for years now, you've been wondering who Doug and I go home to when we say, honey, we're on our way home. Well, here she is in person. Honey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So not a yeah. monster. And who's day. joining you? This is Kiko. Go. She's a little reluctant to be on camera for some reason. <laughs> I'm a little reluctant <laughs> to be on camera too. Down here. Maybe. Come here. Come here. And then making her Psych Thoughts debut. The first time, if you're a student at Tech and you've had one of us, you've probably talked to her. Joining us is Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. And who do you have joining you today? Well, I have two. This is Mr. Stevie Wonder. He is my beautiful <laughs> blind boy, but he, he knows his way around better than I do. And then I have Mr. Go. Merlin. Come here, Mr. Merlin. He's my old boy. He's an old chap, so love Aww. Mr. Merlin. And Mr. Merlin is named after a my dad's old arcade called The Wizard. So he used to have a, a, an old school arcade before uh, arcades sort of like phased out. So, yeah. Right. Cool. With new social distancing protocols, arcades might be a thing of the past. If you're watching this in the future, uh, arcades used to be a thing. Yes. Uh, so there you go. Uh, honey, your your animal changed. This is Mavis. She's my foster dog. <laughs> She's been sitting with us. <laughs> Hello, Mavis. She's a little more photogenic than Kiko. <laughs> so my two ran away, <laughs> but they were here. That, that was Rex. Rex was the dog and Pep Cat. Uh, they're pretty awesome. Uh, here i'll share my story and my dog uh because then everybody else can share their story and it won't end on a downer okay um this is my dog his name is apollo he was a husky he was a rescue uh i had been around him for a long time uh, we used to play and do all sorts of stuff. Unfortunately, about, I think it was about two years ago, he passed away. Um, but the, the good part of the story, he passed away, but when he passed away, he was a large dog. He lived for at least over 13 years. I mean, he was an wow. old dog. 
he couldn't hear. Uh, half the time, I'd go out, and he'd be in the doghouse, and I'd holler at him, and he wouldn't move, and I'd be like, oh, he's passed away. And then when I'd get up close to him, he'd wake up. Uh, but uh, he, was, he was pretty much that dog, and I had a cat uh, that was um, a huge orange tabby that I had for years, too. So that was my two pets that I had, and I haven't made the decision if I want to go into another relationship with an animal because those were pretty much very important to me. So, you know, our time on Elite Singles, Doug, we probably could have got on like Elite Pet Adoptions to see if we were ready to dip <laughs> our toes back in the market. I keep being asked that all the time if I'm ready to 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 get a pet or a cat, and I'm like, ah, I don't know, you know, I just. Uh, I don't know. I'm not ready for that commitment just yet. <laughs> so. Well, you can always foster. That's true. Yeah. I probably will. It's uh, been great. So. Well, I have Elena, two, you have but I have two, but they're too large to fit on my lap. They both <laughs> weigh over a hundred pounds a piece. So. Oh. <laughs> Oh, then. It's a moving carpet. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, wow. Your rug is alive. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, you should Not see my rug, but a shag. Freya. Oh, now my hair. My oh. hair is away. Oh. Man, oh, man. <laughs> Look at that sad face. Somebody should be singing uh, that Sarah McLaughlin song. <laughs> Look at all. We can't eat on camera. Great pyramids. Yeah, they're both. Uh, <laughs> the really fluffy one is a golden retriever great pyramids mix, and then Freya, the female that looks so sad. She's she's mostly great pyramids with a little bit of lab. But they this is how you find my animals most days. That's what they're doing. Aww. Rex will always have one pillow. If there's two, he'll throw it off. And then <laughs> Pepper needs to be in a pounce position. So if Rex gets out of trouble or gets into trouble, he can take care of it. <laughs> how long have everybody had animals? Uh, you know, have you always had animals or animals a new thing for you? Let's hear your stories. I had a golden retriever growing up um, and then my aunt and uncle that we would visit all the time always had golden retrievers <coughs> but I haven't had Kiko a year yet I got her last August from ARF and then this one I only had for about three weeks so I haven't I haven't been in a spot where I had a good yard or a good space for pets thus far so it's been like fish guinea pigs you know, the dogs are where it's at. I struggle with fish. Um, uh, Me too. My son, we were at the dinner table and our tank is right next to our dinner table. And there was a fish who wasn't the right direction any longer. Mm. And Ethan oh, said, no. he said, um, do fish not live very long? And the only thing I could think to say was, not, not here they don't. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, they, do, they do much better in captivity other places than in captivity at, at our house. Yeah. Kelsey, what about you? Have you always had dogs or cats or always had animals? Um, so growing up, um, I remember we had a chow named Ghost and she was just kind of like our protector and, you know, chow chows are like very loyal mm -hmm. and um, uh, my dad, he, he had a, a cat best friend named Mongo, uh, named after Mongo from Blazing Saddles. Uh, and, uh, you know, for a while, of course, I didn't have any pet or anything when I was in college or in grad school. And um, finally, uh, we got a little girl, a uh, little Brussels that uh, Griffon that we had rescued. She looked like an Ewok. She had like a little beard and like an awkward little body. And her name was Greta, but unfortunately she passed last spring. Um, and so Stevie, he was really without a buddy. And since he's blind, you know, he gets really afraid to be by himself. So we got Merlin 
and uh, we got him from the Putnam County Animal Shelter, and honestly, like, he is just such a daddy's boy, and actually, my husband's walking in with them now uh, from going outside to do their business, but yeah, he, he just, like, absolutely gravitates toward my husband and, and Stevie, Mr. Steve, Wilfred Brimley, we call him all sorts of things. Um, he, uh, he's, he's more of a mama's boy and he just loves butt scratchies. So anyone, anyone, it doesn't matter when, if he, Who doesn't? If, oh, I know. It, you know, if, if, um, you know, if you're around him and you have digits and you can provide scratchies, he's all over your lap and he will, he has zero loyalty when it comes to that. That is exactly why Doug and I don't go out in public together anymore. <laughs> because if you are around and you've got digits and you're willing to scratch his butt, he just won't leave you alone. It is, it's difficult. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. He just does it because my little leg goes. It just goes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about you. How about you, Nicole? Tell us about your pets. Uh, well, I, I grew up with pets also. Uh, my parents had two big dogs when I was growing up. Uh, and then I really wanted a cat. And my mom was not a cat person. She did not think that cats were something she would ever want. But I begged and begged and begged until finally, when I was six years old, I think, uh, they got me a cat for my birthday. And then... She became a cat person, and so I think the max number of cats has been three. Um, three cats, two dogs, usually my parents have uh, in the house. And then um, for me, when I was in college, of course, I couldn't have pets, but then when I got to grad school and started my PhD, uh, then I got uh, these boys from the uh, Humane Society, and so they, they helped me through grad school and were good friends, good writing buddies. They like to you know, sit on the keyboard, or if I'm grading, they love to lay all over the papers. Um, but then uh, my fiance, this is his dog actually, but now it's my dog. Um, so Ellie is a really sweet girl. Uh, so we've got a nice little blended family here. You know, everybody seemed to talk about a story where an animal meant so much to them. Uh, and how they were there in, in those particular particular moments. Uh, for you, it was help me get through grad school. W what is it about animals that we love so much? Uh, because they, they are that way, aren't they? Well, you know, I always make the joke, you know, when we lecture in intro to psych, we talk about ways to uh, mitigate stress. And the last one is get a pet. And I always make the joke, you've never seen anybody crying petting a dog, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it just, it, it automatically puts you in a good mood to pet a cat or a dog, you know, you, you break down into that pet talk, you go, hello, you're a good little boy, and you scratch their ears, you know, I, it's, I think animals are, the, are fantastic as far as giving you that support, that extra support in life. And they can, I, I think the animals are very smart. They can, they're in tune with your feelings. You know, they can tell when you're stressed or different things. And so, you know, I, I'm a big advocate of, of pets and, and animals because, you know, they mean a lot, so. My first um, adult pet, I, I had a Dalmatian. Of course, I was a firefighter at the time and uh, Harley was our Dalmatian. He, he would get low and go to, to help kids learn how to get out of fires. He could stop, drop and roll. And we'd often put them uh, and go to uh, events, you know, like uh, vacation Bible school type stuff. They'd want the fire department to come spray the kids and Harley would just jump in the truck with me and we would go. Um, but my wife, when uh, we were trying to start our family and have children, we, were, we, we weren't having much luck. I think I was, uh, I was doing it right, but we weren't having much luck anyway. And we went to the doctor and we got some kind of difficult news and Harley had really two speeds. Uh, speed one was asleep and speed two was rip your shoulder off, right? Like there was no cute cuddly in between, just I'm either going or I'm done. And we got home and, and we were both, you know, visibly upset and Harley came and just sat in front of us and just put his head down in Amanda's lap. I'll never forget that moment of, I love animals. I've always loved animals, but just being like, you're pretty awesome right now. You know, I mean, just, it feels good to have you. I would invite 
uh, anyone watching, all, all two of you, uh, if you've made it this far, congratulations, your medal is in the mail. Um, share your stories in our comment section. Share, share your, your animal story. What's your pet's name? You know, what, do you miss, are you, are you struggling because you're missing somebody? You know, does Doug's story relate to you? We, we want to hear from you. Also, hit the subscribe button. I don't know what that means still, but I'll, I'll learn. I'll, I'll figure it out one day. It's somewhere in this area. Man, uh, which would be maybe you should great. watch one of the videos or you, you could share it you could videos. share it with me <laughs> <laughs> I, I should watch them uh, i should um you should too uh which would be great so leave comments tell us about your tell us about your pets or a time in your life where your pet meant something to you uh, who else uh, give give me an example of the time where uh your pet or, or someone uh was going through some uh struggle where animals Animals were there for you. Yeah, well, so, oh, sorry. No, nope, that's fine, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so when Greta was alive, she was actually um, super helpful and super intuitive when it came to, I, I had a, a panic attack, uh, was really overwhelmed with work. And this is when I worked on the community college level and it is very much a generalist position. You're doing all kinds of projects and all kinds of things that trying to balance you know advising and whatnot and uh new student orientations it was a lot busier and and my caseload my caseload here is about 230 students my caseload in the community college we didn't have one it was just pretty much walk in and we didn't have enough advisors so it was like you know you see 700 students in a year which is crazy and so I had a panic attack one day and just Greta was so intuitive and just immediately sort of brought this sense of peace and I think there's just something about when a when you're rubbing your face in a dog's fur um it, it kind of reminds me of uh you know when infants they it, they have a like that skin to skin contact with their parents and, and it puts them at ease I feel like it's the same thing um so it just really really helped during that time and and ever since like i i just if i'm feeling down i'll just pick up steve or merlin and i'll just give them pets and i feel more at peace with the world i know with uh oh, wow. my two because i've had them for quite a few years i've had odin for nine years and freya for 11 years and uh after i lost my late husband odin would never leave my side he was always there he was always with his face on my leg and always had to be sniffing me to make sure I was okay and always looking at me and, and that kind of thing. Freya didn't care, but, but Odin did. And <laughs> so it was kind of nice. And they're not, they don't like people very much at all. They're not social creatures, they're guard dogs. So uh, when I met my uh, current husband, I was really kind of afraid that they would not like him. And they just took to him right away and, and they actually like him better than they like me now, but I think it's because they he bribes them. That's and a, I also that's I'm gonna try advice. I'm gonna try to Odin, shut up. I'm gonna try to <laughs> bring up a picture because uh Miss Natasha Tyndall sent us um a picture of her and her dog since she did not was not gonna be able to make it today. Yeah, Nala. So, oh. so this is her and Nala. Cute. And uh, she asked if we wanted a backstory, and and uh, she got her six-year-old golden retriever. And uh, she'd always wanted a golden retriever, but her fiance was kind of concerned uh, while they were in school. But she had an opportunity to go get one without his knowledge, apparently. So she went and got Nala, and then brought him home because he was stuck and and said that she goes everywhere with them uh and she's even in their wedding so cute i like the without permission part uh, <laughs> if if you've ever been in a relationship with someone who's resistant to animals you learn that without permission is a fun way to get a new animal um i showed up to a counseling uh, practice that i was at in uh in lebanon and there were these two kittens, and I mean like young, young kittens. And I, I love cats. I, I love any kind of animal, and I, I really wanted some cats. But my wife didn't necessarily want us to get cats. So 
uh, all of the people who worked at the office were female, except for me. So when I got there, they were like, Derek, you've got to do something. And I was like, oh, I've, I've got a plan. So I, I get them in a box and I drive to my house and I open the door and I just call for the kids. I've got two kittens in my hand and I just call for the kids. And Amanda comes around the corner after the kids have already seen these kittens who are, they're just adorable. And I was like, looks like we have cats. I don't know what you're thinking about that. What is that? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a chicken. Aww. This is, oh, hey, Pearl. This is Pearl. We have four Aww, chickens. She's hiding. <laughs> she's camera shy. Uh, thanks to Dr. Wilcox mm -hmm. for my lovely chickens. Um, she's, yeah, she's definitely a camera shy. Come here, Pearly. Okay. <laughs> she's our shy girl. Um, so she's, um, she's, uh, kind of weird. I think she's at the bottom of the pecking order, so. Yeah, my splash is too. <laughs> They're very interesting creatures, though. They're fun to watch, so. Okay. So that begs the question, what's the strangest or oddest pet you've ever had? I had a dog for about seven years, and it was a blast. Like, it always kept you on your toes, you know, and... You had a uh, what? A, sad, a dog. Yes. Yeah. A dog. And sadly, I, I lost Doug. Uh, in a move. He just dropped it uh, off somewhere. <laughs> yeah, just abandoned it. It's the I, I opened the door, it got out uh, to, to do its business, and we just jetted, you know. Oh. You know, you, you think that story's funny, but I actually have a photo here at the house, because that was always a, a joke between me and Lisa about, you know, is this your Doug? And there's this, we somewhere in this big giant sign that said, Lost Doc. And I took a picture of me standing next to it waving because it's like, you know, here I am. <laughs> That's great. It's not my dog. All right. Other strange pets. What have you had? We once had a lizard named Zippity Doodah. I don't know. Was, that was my brother's. I, I don't even know where it came from, but he, uh, it was really weird. Um, I'm from Arkansas, so the land of my people is a very strange place. And we went to a fair. Looking back, it was horrible, but they sold lizards on strings at a fair, and you would just like keep it on your shoulder or whatever. And uh, yep. so my brother, of course, for like 50 cents, he got a little lizard, and we bought it a little terrarium and everything, and he just really. Yeah, he lived for a long time. It was really strange. I've had a fire belly newt. I have goats, but they're too difficult to wrangle anywhere. And I've had a pot belly pig in the house until Freya tried to eat it because we named it Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if the quarantine doesn't end, I'm afraid I'm going to be a pot belly pig. Uh, but... <laughs> That's a different, that's a different Psych Thoughts episode altogether. <laughs> Nicole, have you ever had a strange pet? No, I'm feeling really left out actually, because <laughs> I guess I always lived in apartments and, you know, can't really have many pets at all, much less a pot-bellied pig. <laughs> well, you, the rule is you can have anything until you get caught. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> We uh we had a California king snake for quite some time. Um, it was a weird phase of my life. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> you know, king snakes are nice though. They're harmless. This one was not nice at all. Uh, harmless, yeah. Like I'm still here. Like this this didn't end <laughs> tragically, uh, but not nice. Not not oh, nice man. in the least. Uh, this one, I think it had like a stripe issue, so it kept <laughs> kept lashing out. It's never a good sign when you see a, a king snake in your yard. It means there there are likely other, other snakes, other snakes like a copperhead or something. It's trying to get. I'm like always living in fear if I see a king snake. Yeah, I don't know why I had a snake. I wish I didn't but I did. I'm afraid my son loves animals. He loves them. Like I, I can't even imagine. 
Um, and I'm afraid of the types of animals he's going to want to get when he's a little older. Um, he tried to sneak a frog in the other day. Just he was like, I got nothing in my hand. You're like, that's a, that's a frog. <laughs> I've seen it. Like, I, I know that that's a frog. I'm an adult. And he's like, it's not a frog. <laughs> so for a moment, I was like, that's, that, that's probably not a frog. Like, I didn't, he said it with such conviction, you know? <laughs> Maybe you were wrong. <laughs> just remember that if you are out there and you are someone who might want a pet, there are responsibilities that go with owning an animal uh, that you need, to, you need to be mindful of. Like, do you have the money to feed and care for this thing? Uh, that, that's, gonna, that's gonna be important. Dogs will love you no matter what. Cats will turn on you quickly and never buy a snake. Uh, I, I don't know, that's like a, an okay summary, right? I think so. Cats, cats, I mean, cats are like little people. Like, if, you're, if you've ever had a sketchy roommate, <laughs> what was that, Nicole? Sorry, my my thing's going in and out. Um, I think cats get a bad rap, though. It's, it's they are really individuals, but like you need yeah. to, it needs to be your cat. It's like Teddy and Frankie, like we're we're bonded. You know, they they greet me at the door, like they follow me around the house, like you know. But anyone else who comes in, they don't really care. Like maybe they're curious, but not their friend yet. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably use cats and dogs like a boundary exercise you know dogs have zero boundaries uh, how do you evidence that, that they'll lick anyone who comes to the door as a person you probably don't want to be a dog that's not going to work out well for you uh that's it's a bad a bad look it's a bad scene it's not not healthy cats kind of like that layered boundary that you're talking about i'll, I'll love you but i'm going to know that it's safe for me to love you first uh, so that's Cat and dog boundaries. And boundaries. And sometimes they just don't want to be loved right then, and they go off on their own, and they're cool if you do your own thing. That's fine. They need their space. Yeah. Embracing yeah, their and autonomy. I do too, so it works out. You mentioned that, that you know, animals are, that, that our pets are kind of like our weird roommates, and it's so true about the weird part. I mean, following into the bathroom, that's kind of... That's kind of weird uh, and, and uh, kind of violating. So um, I know. Or sniffing your butt the minute you walk in. Oh, yeah. See where you've been, who you've been with. Yep. Yep. Always. This is a good example of how pets are also like children because all of those things are things children do. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to leave your comments. Whatever you want to say uh about the show we're we're whatever i mean i won't read it because i won't log in uh that'll be great um subscribe tell your friends if you like it if you don't like it keep it to yourself you have a choice on the internet we're just glad that you're on a site that's under yeah yeah send it to your enemy that's send it to your enemies (laughs) you noticed today uh we talked about something that elaine likes and she didn't go Five seconds. <laughs> I'm trying to ease up. You guys still have five and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah, but this- last week it was like, all right, you guys have 29 minutes left. Let's get it on. You know, let's just be done with this. <laughs> We're talking about animals, and Elaine's like, it's fine. Just let the tape run out. <laughs> just in. Elaine, they can follow us on social media, right? How do they do that? Why do you ask me this when I'm not prepared? We're Psychops 2020 on Instagram. Instagram, where we'll take pictures of ourselves. Yeah, we'll have to because everything else doesn't load up. And then we're uh, Psych Thoughts Radio on YouTube. Yes. And then Twitter Twitter is Psych Thoughts R1. I think so. And then Facebook. if you're wondering, we didn't really get in on the low end of social media. So our names are, are, are soon going to be like, we're psych thoughts, hashtag nine or 42. Uh, <laughs> but look for us. You'll find us. Now that you can see our faces, you won't forget us. We're, we're something. If you're out there and you own a business and you're like, we want to sponsor psych thoughts because we like sponsoring <laughs> stuff that doesn't do anything. Do that. We'll take your money. That'll be, that'll be awesome. 
we're all brand loyal to Tennessee Tech University. So if you are interested uh, in sponsoring us from another university, you need to realize that you go to at least the second best university because we've already got the first on lockdown. Uh, honey, it's great to see you on Psych Thoughts again. You've heard her voice here before and we talk to her all the time. She's calls in. She's been one of our two callers. Yes. It's been amazing. Yeah, sometimes I bring PAs to call in too. Kelsey, awesome to see you on Psych Thoughts. It is. Is, is this your first Psych Thoughts experience? This really is, yeah, and it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Kelsey I actually sent an email out promoting our show to all students. She has the power, very he manny. You know, oh, it was pretty. I am glad to send more more invitations to Psych Thoughts. You just let me know whatever you've got. I know Elaine has been, you know, she sends me blurbs, so yeah. She'll send that out and be fired. You see, again, <laughs> if you're out there running a business, it's that easy. Kelsey has shown you how easy it is to sponsor Psych Thoughts. And we want Beautiful. you to be on a winning team, not a losing team. Dr. Henniger, you've become a staple on Psych Thoughts. We hope you never leave us. You make this show so much better. <laughs> Bubbly. Honored, honored to be invited back. Uh, Elaine, you're fired. No, oh, sorry, that was <laughs> no. that was presumptive. I'd have to Don't be hired. Forget, we were, fired. That's good. We'll we'll cut your salary in half and then we'll triple it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me, the president. Honey called. never. Oh. Honey never stops working. If you are uh, new to Psych Thoughts, this is what we do. Uh, we started this show how many years ago, Doug? At least four. Well, we started on the radio and then yeah, we moved to this format. This, so. Yeah. Uh, and our plan is to upload a video weekly. Wednesdays at one, we're always our radio time. So Wednesdays for Psych Thoughts video. Stick, uh, uh, stand by this week for an extra video. We want to pay a tribute to all of our uh, graduating folks from our department, from Tennessee Tech. And we're going to do that in a special video. We'll probably have a few things. Uh, keep in mind, if you've got someone in your life who's graduating, maybe it's from kindergarten or maybe they're getting their doctoral degree, things are a little different this year. Be sure to celebrate with them, even though you can't celebrate in person. But from my end, I think that's it. What about you, Doug? As always, happy trails. Happy trails, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye.